cry, Eagles, cry! Hey everybody, welcome to this channel, the Washington Football Maniacs channel. If you are not subscribed, you need to if you're a Washington football fan. Subscribe, like, and share these videos. And speaking of videos, let's get into today's video. So, for a lot of you folks who are on Twitter, you've probably seen the tears shed in Philadelphia because of the game be being postponed until tomorrow night, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. The game was originally supposed to be played yesterday at 1 p.m., but because of Washington having almost 50% of their roster being out because of being on the positive C list, I mean, it was going to be a struggle for them to fill the team. Now, a lot of the tears are coming from not just Philadelphia fans, but from the players as well. Uh, Darius Slay was being very vocal about his displeasure and the team having to accommodate for the Washington football team to play the game on Tuesday instead of going ahead and playing the game on Sunday. In fact, he was complaining that the Washington football team should have just forfeited the game because they didn't follow protocols. Well, let me tell you something. The team did follow protocols, okay? 90% of the team is vaccinated. There's not many teams in the league that is 100% vaccinated. And as we have seen in today, in today's world, even the vaccinated folks are still getting infected and testing positive. So most of these players who got tested positive were vaccinated players. Uh, maybe only two or three, possibly, who were not vaccinated. And so a lot of Philadelphia fans were pointing at Montez Sweat, saying Montez Sweat who is an unvaxxed player, is the one who started this whole outbreak for the Washington football team. And that also is not the case. If you go back and look at the timeline, yeah, he was the first one, but it didn't start with him. Uh, the football team, the franchise, actually had discovered that it was a vaccinated employee, Tier 3 employee, which means it's an employee who is not around the players as much could be someone who i don't know <clears throat> maybe it is someone who cleans the toilets i have no idea who the who this person was but they were vaccinated and they had gotten tested positive for the omicron version of this so that seems to be what has been the outbreak for this team and having said all that they followed protocols. As soon as they found this out, they took the right protocol. So all of these fans on Twitter who are saying that the Washington football team did not follow proper protocol, so why should the Philadelphia Eagles get punished for this? Well, the answer is that's a bunch of bull. It's a lot of misinformation. The Washington football team did, in fact, follow protocols. You know, this is just something that's happening around the world. And... You know, we're doing what we can to, you know, subdue and to try to limit or reduce um, whatever you want to call it, uh, the spread of this C. But, you know, it's going to happen. There's going to be folks who are still unvaccinated. There's going to be folks who are vaccinated who still get it. It's just, it's just the world we're living in right now. So there was plenty enough evidence and plus if you go back and look at what they were pointing out during july it was like a july news article stating that um, if there's an outbreak amongst unvax unvaccinated players that the team could face forfeit if the game cannot be rescheduled unvaccinated players again this outbreak occurred with vaccinated players for the most part. And 
the fact that protocol was followed and the fact that the NFL was able to reschedule the game. Now, having said all that, you may ask, well, why is the NFL backtracking on all this? Well, folks, I mean, <laughs> money talks, right? And the NFL doesn't want to lose any money, okay? They don't want to lose any money. If they can get these games played, they're going to play these games. That is the reason why they changed the protocols over this weekend to basically say that, hey, if a player is asymptomatic, then, you know, and they're vaccinated, they're not going to be tested every day, or not every day, but they're not going to be tested on a regular basis. They're not going to be tested if they're not exhibiting any um, symptoms or anything like that. So they're loosening up quite a bit on this. Now, will this lead to other break outbreaks? Well, maybe, maybe not. You may have a lot of positive football players but who are not sick. I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm just going to say that, you know, it is good, I think, to, you know, take proper steps to, you know, take caution and all this because you don't want to spread this to anybody who, you know, cannot handle it, who already has underlying health conditions as it is. I mean, you want to protect your fellow man, and I totally agree with that, but I think all of this rubbish that has been going on on Twitter and other social media, uh, Philadelphia fans kind of bellyaching because the the game got moved to Tuesday and now suddenly they got to play three games in 13 days. Well, guess what? The same thing happened to the Washington football team last year. They Their game got moved uh, against Philly, or not Philly, against Pittsburgh. The game got moved to Monday afternoon. They had to play that game on a short week, had to turn around, fly out to the West to play the San Francisco 49ers. And then after that, they had to, they had to play the Seahawks. Washington won against the Steelers and the 49ers. So Philadelphia Eagles, all I got to say is, if you don't think it's fair, tough. Just suck it up. Go out there, beat the Washington football team. If you think you're the better team anyway, then just beat them, all right? You know, with players getting on Twitter, social media, and complaining about all of this makes you wonder what type of confidence do they have, all right? I mean, hey, you you have to do this when you play on Sunday and then you turn around and play on Thursday night. That's an even shorter turnaround. So, I mean... Hey, you know, this is this is the profession you picked. So, you know, if this is what happens, then this is what happens. So, I'm fully expecting some fights to break out probably within the stands uh, at, at the, the Lincoln Park. But also at, you know, probably you're going to see a bunch of fights on, on the field as well. It's probably going to be a scrappy game, I bet, Tuesday night. And depending on who we get back, you know, we could have a chance. I think today we'll probably learn if we're going to have either one of our quarterbacks back, Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke. I expect one of those guys at least to be back. And one of those guys will more than likely play tomorrow night because, let's face it, the other guys, I don't know anything about those guys. Nobody does. I'm not even quite sure if the coaching staff knows a lot about these guys. So we really need a quarterback. We're still going to be minus some key players, but we've gotten some good players back. Um, again, I think if we can get uh, some more offensive linemen back, if we can get our quarterback back, then we have a shot. And that's all that I'm asking for is for a shot at winning this game because – we have to keep pressure on the Cowboys. We're we'll turn around. We're having to fly out to Texas to play the Cowboys after this game. So it's not an easy stretch for the Washington football team. Uh, trust me, they would have rather played yesterday if everybody was healthy, too. So you get you, there's two sides to look at this. There's two franchises, two football teams involved in this. 
one team isn't getting punished. Neither team really is getting punished. I mean, it's just it's the way it is. Uh, so that being said, that is the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one.